almost was at a dying state. The result, and now is an entirely dead coral tank. A1A fam, welcome back to the promised continual videos of A1A Adventures. Now we're gonna go ahead and continue off of the last video that we recently posted as we took a small break away from YouTube, but there was a lot that went on, many different aquarium updates, and we're gonna show you what we did. And please, once again, comment below if you wanna see any suggestions. We'll entertain as many as we can as far as saltwater and freshwater aquarium suggestions in our tanks, our tank builds, our tank upgrades and aquarium adventures. So stay tuned because I'm gonna show you what we did. First, let me see if I could show you a rare shot. Will it stay out on that bottom crevice? Oh, there it is, it's flexing on us. Oh, it's flexing on us, look at it, look at it. Wait, come on, come on. Thor, flex on us, flex. That is our mantis shrimp. Our mantis shrimp named Thor, which is somewhat of a rare sight to see. This peacock, oh, oh, it, oh, it went back in. Come on, Thor, flex on us. Show us who's boss, show us. It literally, oh, it comes out and like does this big flare up and tries to threaten us, but no. It's so gentle. Well, I haven't really stuck my fit. oh, I haven't stuck my finger in there to feed it yet, but it eats carnivore pellets and it is growing <laughs> insane. If you haven't seen our other mantis shrimp videos, definitely check them out because we've had this mantis shrimp now for about two and a half years and it came for free. It arrived on one of these rocks that we got from the aquarium store, our local fish store, and that was an awesome come up, an awesome bonus because it is very exciting. However, it is a, eh, you know, it's, it's a predator animal, so it will eat anything you put in here, which is why it lives solely by itself, and it is isolated away from all of our other aquarium creatures, and it's just fun to have. And yeah, there's Thor. The saltwater aquarium that we keep our clownfish in, and several other species of animals. We do have some freshwater mollies in here that, of course, have been recently acclimated to saltwater mollies. We transferred some of the urchins over to this aquarium because they were very klutzy and clumsy and moving a lot of the other coral around and knocking it over constantly, which is very typical of urchins. So we have our pencil urchin in here. Let's take a nice close look at you. Hello, Mr. Pencil Urchin. What should we name you? Crayola? I don't know. Some of our animals don't have a name. Of course, if you ever want to name our animals, drop a comment below and throw some names out. Here's my goby. I love this round goby we have. Always hungry. And in the back, can you see there's a molly? A little molly fish back there, but also, oh, there's the eyes. Look, you can see it. It was waving. Waving to the A1A fam. Hello, hello. And beyond that molly, I can't see it too well. But maybe you can. There's a couple spines back there, right under that rock in that little crevice right there. And that is a spiny urchin, which we did remove from the coral tank. The most recent updated coral tank that we have on this channel. Which in fact still does contain one more urchin and as I can find it over time, we will remove it and we will transfer it over to this aquarium. And from our little nano aquarium that we have been moving corals over from time to time, yes, that is a baby starfish, an Astorina starfish. And they do multiply by losing legs and those every leg lost turns into a new starfish. So don't worry, they continue on their life cycle by reproducing just by breaking a leg. How many are we equipped with in this aquarium? Uh, let's say, not even joking, 30 at a minimum. There may be 50 by our next video because they definitely reproduce rather quick. So all of that coral that we had, where did it go? What did we do with it? Did we throw it away? Did we sell it? Because we had that nano aquarium for years that showed two different lightings. We had two different lights on it. We had a Flutal Nano as well as a Spectra LED light on it too. Those lamps are phenomenal. I can't say anything bad about them. If you have any aquarium from a nano aquarium, from a five gallon to a 10 gallon to a 20 gallon, even a 30 gallon, they are amazing, especially if you have both. But we decided to kind of shift a few things around and that was basically combining one aquarium to the bigger one and making a giant aquarium coral garden out of it and a giant ecosystem, so to speak, and just make one tank, which seems a little bit less and easier, you know, maintenance and easier to take care of, but it's really not. It's just in a bigger body of water and a little more intricate detail on those corals to make sure they're, they're not too close to each other, to sting each other, to make sure that everything balances just perfect. So let me show you what we did. This is the result and now is an entirely dead coral tank. 
Well, it's just simply because we removed all of the coral out of it, everything is perfectly fine. We triple checked every single little critter that could have been in the back of that sump, which I didn't document the whole entire removal of everything, but it did contain a lot of starfish. It did contain a lot of little different types of worms that do live and exist within the sand bed and the rocks that do help and assist at cleaning and keeping the coral very clean and keeping this water parameter always up to par as good filter feeders and they help remove a lot of the bacteria. Now, what's left over in the back is just little pieces of, I guess, undeveloped uh, little bristle worms and all different types of, you know, little microbacteria and algae that is just left over, as well as some, you know, particles from the water as well, some minerals that just dry up and they are very hard to exfoliate from that surface. So it's a plastic surface, typically in the back of these fluval aquariums and it's sometimes not that easy. You need like a razor blade and you need to chip that off really well. But I think we're getting rid of this tank. I think I do have somebody that wants it. So we're gonna go ahead and keep it the way it is. And it's important if you do dry out a tank, not to leave it dry for too long because the ceilings and the caulk located on the corners that seal this tank and keep it intact from leaking and exploding, you do want to keep typically with running water, even if it was a saltwater tank, keep it running with fresh water because over time it just weakens the ceilings around. And if you're gonna give it to somebody, you wanna give it to them in a good condition and enough to where it's still functional and usable for them to enjoy this just as much as you. So all of the coral that was in that little nano tank now exists in this 32 gallon bio cube monstrous coral garden. Now we did pick up some other little corals too. I believe they're called load, load corals. They are, boom, they're stacked. They are definitely big, big honchos in this tank and they eat big things. So even a cleaner shrimp, I would almost be worried because we did have a baby coral banded cleaner shrimp that was in that nano tank previously. I just showed you that I was so excited when we cleaned it out. I'm like, finally, I will be able to find that mini little shrimp that we got several months back. It was a golden coral banded shrimp and it was about $25 too. So I'm like, oh, that $25 investment must be about double, triple, if not quadruple that size of nothing. It did not exist. We did not find it. And there was no other animal in that tank. It didn't escape the tank. There was no dried up remains of the shell or any of that such. So I believe it could have possibly have been taken by one of these corals because it did molt two times in that tank. So I, f I would find the molts periodically from time to time, but I did not find that shrimp at the end of the whole entire removal and transition to this big tank. So it is what it is, but I did find this little, I found this on a little tiny rock. That is a micro little redactus, sorry, recordia. That's a recordia mushroom, as well as its other little buddy recordia over there and next to a little mini disc anemone attached right to that same rock right there in the middle and those two now will i did glue them to this rock so they're not going to be pushed around because those two tiny little corals they did get knocked around a lot like as you see the snail loves this rock so that snail if they weren't glued to this rock would constantly just push them around. I'd have to reposition them and make sure they have a good area in this tank to absorb the proper amount of light in the proper par as well in which they require to keep growing. So I did fasten them to that rock, which I'm sure they are very happy about. As well as today, I did fasten some other little polyps back there that were constantly just moving around way too much. They are positioned a little bit better to absorb the light without being moved around much where they can spread and they can grow the montipora now that was recently in the other tank as well and had a huge it almost was at a dying state because the middle part of it was ripped out of the rock by the mantis shrimp looking to make a home whether it was inside of the uh, montipora coral or if they wanted to rip it out to basically take ownership of the hole that the post of the coral frag was in under the rock because they are like T posts, as you can see, like all of the other little frags that we have. So they basically do have to 
fasten or fit within a hole like these. So it was like, no, let me take, let me take you out and let me go ahead and try to bury and make a home in there. So that's why mantis shrimp and even urchins as they get too big can sometimes be a little bit klutzy and not mindful of the space and leaving all the coral that you may have thriving in your coral tank at peace. So these here, these are all of the Xenia all of the Xenia just pulsing. I just moved this rock around because I moved it several times around and as I was doing the gluing on these mushrooms here, uh, they did kind of get moved around so they're still bouncing back from about an hour ago of just being moved so they thrive very well, they do awesome. We have some sponge growing back there as well as more disc anemones that just keep continually reproducing and splitting and thriving. And that's it. I mean, this is pretty much just a nice little rundown of this tank. Uh, if there's any questions on any corals that we do have, that we should get, that we shouldn't get, let us know. Comment below, because this has been an awesome adventure of actually moving one coral tank, combining it into two different coral tanks right here on A1A Adventures. So thank you everybody for watching, and let's continue our aquarium adventures together. So as always, stay adventurous, a1A Adventure. And also, please do not forget about this crazy planted freshwater tank that we have growing out of control. If you'd like to see more of it, please let us know and suggest anything that you'd like to see us add into this planted